ready. Ready to return humanity to the moon and then to take us further than ever before to Mars. Last year was one for the history books. We did what was hard and we achieved what was great. Artemis, DART, the James Webb Space Telescope, and the task before us now is to keep NASA heading onward and upward. And so today, President Biden has released his fiscal year 2024 budget. And I can report that the Biden administration has requested $27.2 billion for NASA. And that's a 7.1% increase compared to last year's 2023 historic budget. And this budget request reflects the administration's confidence in NASA and its faith in the world's finest workforce. The president's budget will help us continue with regular crewed missions to the International Space Station. And the space station has taught us how to live and work in space. And it's providing groundbreaking research to improve life here on the face of the Earth. It's providing the foundation for commercial space stations, and it's paving the way for humanity's return to the moon. And lift off of Artemis 1. It's a new era of pioneers, star sailors and adventurers. We're going beyond anywhere we ever went for Apollo. Splashdown, Orion, back on Earth. And there's a lot more coming. Our destiny is always to go and see what's further and what's next. There are actually metals being bent, shaped, formed to build the things that we're gonna use. We are going. This is reality. NASA is at a historic inflection point, poised to begin the most significant series of science and human exploration missions in over a generation. Astronauts will live and work in deep space and will develop the science and technology to send the first humans to Mars. I'm really looking forward to all the science we will conduct on the moon. The samples we'll bring back, the knowledge we'll gain from understanding the lunar environment better than we ever have before. The more nations and companies at the moon, the more we learn, increasing our capabilities while strengthening things right here on Earth. We are going to the moon to learn how to live on other planets for the benefit of all. Let's go. On April the 3rd, we will announce the crew for the first mission back to the moon in over a half century. Four astronauts, three from America and one from Canada, will fly around the moon and they'll test NASA's space launch system, which is our rocket, and the spacecraft called Orion. And in the coming days, we will reveal the next generation spacesuits for Artemis III, which is the follow-on mission that will land on the moon. And it is a spacesuit that the first woman and the next man will wear when they take their first steps on the moon. American companies, in the meantime, will soon land payloads on the moon for the first time. And these missions are really challenging and risky. They're gonna help us conduct new science. They're vital for the exploration on the moon to prepare ahead of time and then beyond the moon. New technology is key for us to explore deep space. And the president has increased NASA's space technology research up to $1.4 billion. And this includes funding for nuclear thermal and nuclear electric propulsion in order to get us faster to Mars. 
NASA is laser focused on Mars. And our deputy administrator, Pam Melroy, has taken the lead on developing and refining our moon to Mars strategy. Now we're finalizing a process for an evolving architecture. It's a plan that will lay out all that we need to make our vision on Mars a reality. With the Mars Sample Return Mission, we will bring back to Earth the first ever samples collected from another planet. And these samples will help us answer the ultimate question, was there life on another planet? At NASA, we explore the heavens, and we're also committed to protecting our planet. We will launch a new generation of satellite missions that will study our planet as a system. New and extensive data will be added to the Earth Information Center, which will monitor conditions here on our home planet. It is like a mission control, but for climate and Earth science. And the goal is to make climate data more available and understandable for all people everywhere. We want to protect our planet by better understanding it. And we must also defend our planet. Last year with DART, we crashed a refrigerator-sized spacecraft into an asteroid and we altered its trajectory. And NASA will try to protect the planet with new missions like the NEO Surveyor to identify threatening asteroids and comets. If we can find them out there far enough away, we can protect our planet. And so as we are doing this, now NASA is developing the next generation of greener and cleaner aircraft. which is the first A in NASA, we received a billion dollars in the budget. It will help us fly a quiet supersonic flight over land, the needle-nose jet, the X-59. It will revolutionize the aviation industry. It's more proof that NASA is an economic engine that supports good-paying American jobs. With our international and commercial partners, we are igniting a global industry. NASA's missions are game changers, but changing the game is in NASA's DNA. No mission is possible without the NASA workforce. Amazing legacy our workforce has created to guide us where we want to go.
Pam Melroy, Bob Cabana, and I are committed to leading NASA as a team. Our NASA team will conduct missions that shape history and inspire humanity. Let's continue to make sure the workforce of tomorrow looks like all of America. Let's bring inspiration to the first humans who will walk on Mars, and that's the students in the classrooms right now. You should see their eyes light up when they talk about space. And it's moments like these that occur daily at NASA. It's what we dream and what we dare to achieve. It's what we build today and prepare to build tomorrow. And it's because of the NASA family. The state of NASA is growing ever stronger and beaming inspiration across America and throughout the world. Thank you for what you do. Onward and upward.